How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here, and in this video we're going to be covering one of the most important things you can be doing to any Ryzen CPU, whether it be old, new, high or low end. And in this video we're going to be covering undervolting, keeping the same performance, or in some cases actually increasing performance, lowering the amount of power being drawn from the CPU, leading to lower temperatures. It's a win-win-win scenario when set up correctly, and in this video I'll be teaching you how to quickly and easily set up and tune your undervolt for your specific system. Whether you're running on a high-end liquid cooler, or if you're using the CPU cooler which came in the box with your low end Ryzen CPU, it doesn't matter what you're using, whether it's high end, low end, there are gains to be had across the board, with all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. First of all, for those of you running on A-series motherboards, whether it be an A320, A520, or A620 or 720 chipset motherboard, unfortunately, this will not work. You can't overclock, undervolt any Ryzen CPU if it's running on an A-series chipset. It's not that it's not recommended. If you adjust any of the voltage parameters or clock speed parameters on an A-series motherboard, they simply just will not be applied. To check the motherboard chipset in which you are using to see if undervolting is supported, simply take yourself down to the bottom left-hand side, type DX Dia then press enter. Once this finishes loading, navigate down to the system model section, where you'll typically either see A320, A520, B450, or whatever the motherboard chipset is. A B or an X is fine. In some cases, under system model, you may just see a random system name, like my main PC here, where it says MS-7D13. Best thing you can do is head over to Google, type in the system model. So for me, that was MS-7D13. Once you do this, you'll more than likely find listings for your motherboard, where you'll then be able to see the chipset. If it begins with a B or an X and has three numbers after it, that will be the chipset in which you are using. If it's a B or an X series motherboard, you're good to go. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. Undervolting is a super simple set it and forget it setting. Once it's set up and tuned for your system, you'll never have to worry about it and your system will operate within stock parameters. You'll just be reducing the voltage in which the system is utilizing. We aren't locking any clocks or locking any certain speeds. We are just simply adjusting the amount of voltage the system can sip at any given time. There are more efficient ways to tune a Ryzen CPU, such as using the PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive parameter and I will have a video coming on that soon, but that can have a little bit more trial and error. It's incredibly quick and easy to set up, but for most people, undervolting is the way to go as it's a quick set it and forget it, and you're not introducing any sort of overclocking to your system and your system is running at its stock parameters. Before we undervolt, I highly recommend downloading and utilizing applications such as Cinebench and Hardware Monitor to monitor your CPU statistics to see how much voltage it's currently using at stock settings, how many watts it's drawing from the wall, the temperature, the clock speed, and utilizing Cinebench to put a load on the system to one, make sure that the system is stable at your current stock settings, and two, it will give us a final score of our CPU performance in which we can compare to our undervolted CPU at the end of the video to see if our undervolt has affected performance in any way. Once you have Hardware Monitor and Cinebench downloaded, we're now good to start undervolting. We're first of all going to get a quick base reading of what our current CPU temperatures are, how many watts the CPU pulls, and the core clocks of the CPU throughout this process. So start off by opening up Hardware Monitor. If you can't read some of the options, go up to the top to these small sliders and just drag these across to make them slightly bigger. Scroll towards the top, find your CPU. Underneath this, there are a few options in which we're going to be monitoring throughout this process. First off, we have the VID max, which is the CPU voltage. Underneath this, we have the temperature package, which is the overall CPU temperature. Underneath this, we have the package power in watts. And lastly, we have the core clocks towards the bottom. At this point, drag this over to the right-hand side, then open up Cinebench. Go to the top left to File, select Advanced Benchmark, set the minimum test duration to Off, as we're not going to be doing any stress testing just yet. Minimize this slightly so you can drag it over to the side, then hit start on the CPU multi-core test. Once the test has started, take note of some of the numbers on the right hand side. The main number you want to have a look at with inside of here is going to be your CPU VID. For me, I'm utilizing anywhere from about 1.087 volts to 1.1 volts throughout this test. Throughout this process, you are going to see that your CPU package power and package temperature is going to climb quite drastically, and we can take note of those later on, and what our core clocks are throughout the test. When my CPU is under a Cinebench load, we're actually going anywhere from 
5 gigahertz up to 4.1 gigahertz. Once Cinebench finishes, I'd recommend quickly opening up a notepad on your system so we can take note of some of the stock numbers. Start by putting in the Cinebench score. For me, that was 10,167 points. Your Cinebench score is more than likely going to be completely different to mine. This is completely down to the CPU in which we're using and what your stock settings are. Underneath this, you can put the voltage your CPU was utilizing throughout this test. It's not super important due to the way that Ryzen CPUs boost. In some cases, during an undervolt at stock settings on Ryzen CPUs, you may actually see that your voltage goes up higher when undervolting. Now that does sound counterintuitive, but it's due to the nature of how Ryzen CPUs work. The CPU could be utilizing more voltage to boost core clocks higher, in turn giving you better performance, reducing or keeping the same amount of power going through the CPU in watts, and often keeping the same or if not lower temperatures. So underneath this, put the maximum CPU package temperature we reached, which was 69.1C. Package power capped out at 78 watts, and throughout the test, our CPU core clocks were going anywhere from 4050 to 4100 under low. Go to the top left to File, Save, go to the desktop, and simply name this something you will remember. At this stage, boot into the BIOS to begin undervolting. Go to the bottom left, right click on the power button, restart. When restarting your system, make sure that you do go to the delete key on your keyboard and press this throughout the reboot process. Once you boot it into your BIOS, don't be alarmed if it looks very different to mine. Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, ASRock, whatever it is, will typically be brought into a basic BIOS mode, which will look similar to this, we first of all need to access the advanced mode or classic mode by pressing F2 on the keyboard. Throughout this undervolting process, to dive into a little bit more detail, we aren't going to be locking or lowering the core clocks in this undervolting guide. We're simply going to be leaving the CPU to run through its complete stock clock power band. This means that we're going to be keeping all of the functionality of the CPU running at lower clock speeds at idle to save power, all the way up to boosting higher when needed. With that being said, we need to navigate over to the advanced voltage settings for our system. On a Asus motherboard, you'll need to navigate over to the AI tweaker settings. On this Gigabyte motherboard, I need to navigate over to advanced voltage setting. But before we adjust any of the voltage settings for our motherboard, I would highly recommend pulling out your phone, taking a picture of what the current settings are before you adjust anything. This makes changing the settings back to what they were without restoring all of the settings for the BIOS extremely easy. So if you do accidentally slip and change a setting you didn't want to change, you can quickly and easily look at the picture, see what it was set to previously, and just set it back. This also goes for if you want to revert all of the settings that you're about to adjust, if you want to change them back to how they were before this video, look at the picture and simply set them back. If your values are set to auto, to simply set them back to auto or normal, just simply type auto or AU or NOR for normal and press enter. Under your CPU voltage, also known as CPU vCore, if there are any modes available which you can change, make sure that you do set your CPU vCore to be a dynamic vCore. If that option exists or not, we also need to set our CPU voltage mode to be an offset mode. With offset selected under any modes, we then need to set the sign or offset type to negative. So if there is an option to set this to either minus or negative, do that. We then need to set our negative voltage offset to undervolt. For this Gigabyte motherboard, it's very simple and easy to do. It's already set to a dynamic V core, so all I need to do is just input zero where it says auto. All I need to do is press the minus key on the keyboard. For nearly every single person watching, for a super modest undervolt, which will work on practically all systems, start by applying a minus 0 0.050 volt undervolt. In some cases, like on this Gigabyte motherboard, you won't be able to get the number exact, but get as close to it as possible. Once it's been applied, go to the top right hand side to save and exit, save and exit setup, and save. Start the Cinebench test once again with the undervolt applied. With such a moderate undervolt applied, you more than likely won't see a drastic change in performance clock speeds, temperature, or even watts. We need to set this number more aggressively, but this is a good starting step. Instantly throughout this test, you can see that the CPU voltage is actually slightly higher, but we're keeping the exact same amount of watts the CPU is actually using, and the CPU temperature is basically the exact same. But unlike last time, you can see that our CPU clock speed is now actually reaching higher than it did before. This is where the testing technology is slightly flawed, as Cinebench is an unrealistic benchmark and stress test for CPU testing for 90% of people. Most of you are simply going to be using your PCs for light work, browsing, and then playing games, which typically won't stress every single CPU core at 100% load all the time. For those reasons, I like to introduce at least one or two games in my testing whilst undervolting to actually see if we're getting any gaming performance results. Apex Legends and Warzone 2 or Modern Warfare 2 are two of my favorite games to utilize throughout these tests. They are very sensitive to any 
CPU adjustments, and they'll quickly show you if your CPU undervolt, overclock, or whatever adjustments you're making to your CPU are unstable. Inside of the game here, I'm utilizing the negative 0.054 volt undervolt, and we're utilizing about 60 to 62 watts with inside of the game. The CPU temperature is sitting at about 64 degrees, and we can let this run for about 10 minutes or so just to lock in those numbers of what they'll roughly be. So if your Cinebench run passes and you've tested your game, whether it be a game benchmark or something like Apex Legends for a set amount of time, restart and boot back into the BIOS, go back to the voltage settings in which you were adjusting earlier on, wherever they may be for you, we can then increase this by about 15 millivolts at a time. So for me, I'm going to be taking this down by an additional 15 to 20 millivolts, taking me down to negative 0.072. Once that's then done, go to the top right hand side to file and save, boot back into the desktop and run the exact same test. Open up hardware monitor, open up Cinebench, run Cinebench, keep an eye on the numbers. Once completed, run your gaming benchmark and see if you're starting to see any reductions in temperature and overall watts used. With the Cinebench test then completed, you can now see that our Cinebench score is now starting to climb back up to what it was earlier on, showing that we're now starting to get some of those efficiency gains on our system. At that point, go back to your gaming benchmark, whatever it may be, and run the exact same test. Get the test as identical as possible and see if you are starting to see any improvements to the overall wattage or temperatures drawn from the CPU. Reboot your system take away another 20 millivolts and keep repeating this step until eventually the system becomes unstable and will more than likely crash. Once you reach the point where your system starts crashing or becoming unstable, don't panic, this is completely normal and to be expected. First thing that you will need to do is attempt to restart the system and boot back into the BIOS. What you will then do is navigate over to the voltage settings in which you were changing earlier on, increase the voltage back to the previous point where you weren't crashing. So for me, for example, I started to crash at negative 0.160 volts. Dialing this back to my previous attempt, which passed all of my tests, negative 0.144 volts. Set that number back to my previous stable point, go to the top right hand side to save and exit, and rerun those tests just to double check that it wasn't actually a fluke. If for any reason, at any point throughout this video, if you want to restore your system back to its default settings before you touched anything, for any reason, whether you just wanted to try out the undervolt or set everything back, simply restart the system and boot into the BIOS. All you need to do is navigate over to the save and exit panel for your BIOS. The panel could be laid out slightly differently, but the option will always be there in every BIOS. We're looking for the Load Optimized Default setting. Go ahead and double click this, select Load Optimized Defaults. Once that's been selected, all of your BIOS settings will be immediately set back to the stock out of the box settings. No custom profiles will be applied at this point, nothing will have been adjusted from this video and it will be back to how it was before anything was adjusted. If you have loaded optimized defaults, you might also want to go over to your memory settings or frequency settings and re-enable any XMP or DOCP memory profiles you might have enabled. Alongside this, you might also want to go to your main menu and check any custom fan settings you had with inside of your BIOS. If you did have a custom fan profile, you can quickly set that back up with inside of here or go to the drop down menu and select from any of the presets from silent, normal or full speed. With the optimized defaults then loaded or any custom settings then applied afterwards, head up to the top right hand side to save and exit, save and exit setup, the PC will then restart and your BIOS settings will be back to how they were before anything was adjusted. If unfortunately your system has become slightly too unstable that you can't get back into the BIOS properly to change the setting without running into any instability, well in these cases that's completely fine. First of all, turn off your system at the back. If you do have a clear CMOS button on the back IO, make sure that you press this and hold it for about 5 to 10 seconds, boot the PC back on and that will reset your BIOS. If you don't have one of these buttons, don't panic, simply open up the PC side panel, make sure that the PC has been turned off and unplugged at the wall. Find the circular battery, press the tab down for this to release the circular battery for the CMOS. Leave this out of the system for anywhere from 20 seconds to about a minute. Put it back in, power the PC back on, and the BIOS will be completely cleared back to stock settings, and you're then good to go. Put your previous stable undervolt voltage back in. For me, that was negative 0.144 volts. Boot back into the system and run your tests again. What we then need to do is test for overall stability. One of my favorite methods to do this over a long period of time is to utilize Cinebench, this time setting the minimum duration all the way up to about 30 minutes and seeing if that can pass. If it can pass Cinebench at 30 minutes, you're more than likely are going to be stable in most cases. What you then need to do is test in some real world games. Boot up some of your favorite games that you actually play, play at the settings you play at, and do some testing. If you run into any game crashes or outright system crashes, go back to the undervolt and increase it by about 0.15 to 0.20 millivolts like we were, but in the opposite direction. So let's say that I have an undervolt which I believe is stable at negative 0.0. 0.144 volts. Unfortunately, it crashes in one of my favorite games, so what I will do is change this up to negative 0.122 volts, increasing by 20 millivolts, adding a bit voltage back to make sure that the system is then stable. We'll repeat this step until all of the crashes have gone away, and we believe our system to be stable. Because we haven't modified the parameters of 
how the system actually works, we're just adjusting the voltage offset, our system is still going to downclock itself quite aggressively when idling at the desktop not doing much, so we need to make sure that that is still stable. Close out of all of the applications on your PC, leave your PC running at the desktop for a little while, open up the web browser, do some light web browsing, and put a very small load on your system, and ensure that your desktop is still stable at idle. If it becomes unstable, really slow, sluggish, or has any hitching issues, go back, add 10 to 15 millivolts to your undervolt to raise it slightly, come back, test again. After running all of those tests, you'll then be left with a successful undervolt for your system. And lastly, booting back into Apex Legends, at my stock settings and the first undervolt in which we applied, I was utilizing about 60 watts in this scene, and as you can now see on the left-hand side, I'm utilizing anywhere from 51 to 55, which is about a 10 to 15% reduction in overall power, and we've seen a somewhat significant drop to overall CPU temperature. Now, depending on the CPU in which you're using and the game in which you're playing, you could see drastically better results than this, especially for those of you running on higher core count CPUs, which are really soaking back that power, more efficiency, lower power, and keep those clocks running higher for longer without any overclocking. We're still running completely within the stock parameters of the CPU, and if you're someone that is quite paranoid that this might not be stable on your system, I would recommend utilizing OCCT as a stress testing suite for your system. And there you guys have it. That is how to correctly undervolt your Ryzen CPU, keeping it within its stock parameters and increasing its efficiency. And if you enjoy content like this, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're looking for more optimization guides to get the most out of your system, I highly recommend the two videos on screen now, and I'll see you over there.